What do you say, everybody? Mick Gillespie, Chad Anderson on the Cubs baseball channel. And uh, we're scrambling here because the news is breaking, as you've probably heard. David Ross out as manager, Craig Council in. And I'm going to tell you right now, as much as I think David Ross is a good guy, Craig Council is a great manager. He's one of the best in the game. And this is a, this is a beast move by the Cubs. You go and you take the champion of the division's manager, and you put him in Chicago at Wrigley Field, um, it helps you on so many different levels. We're going to talk about that. You guys get in the comments section if you're hanging out with us while we're live. I thought it was a joke when people started sending this to me. Uh, th nothing they have done, the Cubs have done a tremendous job of flying under the radar because none of us heard any of this talk. That we knew Craig Council was available. You know, the, the everyone was saying, you know, David Ross is coming back. And um, and I mean, it's being reported by everybody that this yeah. is actually happening. And honestly, I think it's the best move. You gotta have somebody that's gonna be able to incorporate young players. I've been critical of David Ross. I've been around the Cubs for 20 years, and and I'm telling you, the talent is there, the talent is coming. You want a manager that's able to incorporate those guys with the players that you already have. You got to have a yeah. mix there to find success. And I felt like down the stretch, it just didn't feel like those guys were, were able to perform the way that I know that they can. Is that all David Ross's fault? No, but the experience was in there. And when he took over Chad and you got to remember it was the end of Joe Madden's era you wanted someone to come in and work with the players who were there that won the World Series that he played with. It was a veteran team at that point, guys that he knew and he respected. You weren't trying to incorporate a bunch of young guys, and you were hoping that maybe you could find the success that those teams had and those players had. Uh, you know, talking about Anthony Rizzo, who he had a great relationship with, and and um, uh, Kyle Schwarber and Javi Baez and Chris Bryan. And then those guys left. And then all of a sudden you become a different organization. And I felt like that was where his lack of experience or inexperience really hurt him. And when you look at the guys that won the world series they're they've been in the minor leagues, they've been, they've been coaches uh, as assistant coaches, pitching, pitching coach for, for Bruce Bochy, but he also managed in the minor leagues. My buddy was on the broadcaster, of the team that he won a championship with in the minors, all that experience matters. And for Council, he's got experience in Milwaukee. So, um, Chad, this is honestly, man, this is a huge day for the Cubs. Wow. Yeah, shocking, to be honest. You know, the last we had heard of Craig Council was that he had gotten permission from the Cleveland Guardians to interview him for the managerial opening there, replacing Terry Francona. This comes completely out of left field. The only negative anybody could drum up from this is that the Brewers never actually did anything as far as they won the division, but they didn't go deep into any playoff runs um, as far as making it to the World Series. So, but I'm perfectly fine with that because Council has proven with what he's done in, in Milwaukee. He's done a phenomenal job, uh, wins a division all the time, has a very competitive team. And I also think, Mick, when you're looking at this, so two things, this reminds me of what the Cubs did and what Theo did when Joe Madden became available in 2015. Ricky Renteria was the manager, only had one year, and they basically had to go talk to him and just say, look, man, this is nothing against you. But we're talking about freaking Joe Madden here. Right. Same thing in this scenario. Ross, look, we like you as a person. There are some things we wish you had done better, but we're not necessarily laying all the blame at your doorstep. But, you know, th this is what it is. And Craig Council's available and we got to take advantage of it. Same situation to me. Could not be happier that the Cubs pulled this trigger. And also, Mick, what's huge here is this. You, you know for a fact there's no way Craig Council just made this move without Tom Ricketts, Jed Hoyer, and the front office saying, Craig, look, we're going to make moves 
this offseason. There's no way Council oh, came yeah. over without some sort of guarantee that from Ricketts and from Hoyer, look, we're in. And I don't know if it's Otani. I don't know if it's Yamamoto. I don't know if it's Soto, Belly, Alonzo, Snell, Hader, all of the above. I don't know which, you know, we haven't seen that. But you know those conversations were had where Council said, I'm choosing the Cubs because of what the front office just told me. Plus, I mean, let's be honest. Managing at Wrigley Field every day versus what is it called? American Family Ballpark or something. I right. mean, it, it's a step up, but also the Cubs organization had to indicate to them or to council, look, man, we're we're going for it. Okay. This is what's happening and we need you to run it. Yeah. Look, I, I'm I'm with you on all fronts. Uh I've considered Craig Council one of the best for a long time. And I know he hasn't won in the postseason, but the Brewers aren't a team that sets themselves up to win. That's why they haven't won a World Series in the history of their organization. And the reason why is that when they had a stretch run where they had the best closer in the game, they traded the guy at the deadline. They traded the guy at the deadline. And the reason, well, it was you know, it came down to money, right? And if you're worried about paying guys when you have a team that's that damn good, then that's what happens, you yeah. know? The, the, why do you think that their team president is with the Mets? Why do you think Craig Council is going to Wrigley? Well, first off, it's because go to a game in Milwaukee, and guess what you're going to see? Cubs fans. You're going to see the C. <laughs> Lots of it. Because yeah. we take over up there. You know, the Cubs are the – being a Cubs fan, and I've been a Cubs fan just like you, you know. I was a Cubs fan probably before – before you were born or maybe like as a little baby, you know, like and it's been painful over the years, Chad, <laughs> but it's still <laughs> been fantastic, you know, because there's so many Cubs fans and, and it's such a great fan base. And, and sometimes I think it does hurt us because so many Cubs fans will show up even when the team's not playing well. But yeah. what I love about Tom Ricketts and, you know, I'm a fan of Tom and I consider him a friend is that I know the guy wants to win. And what the Cubs did, and this was a criticism that I had on this channel, when they won the World Series, they went out and got the best of the best. Theo Epstein was the best executive available. They yep. went and got him. Then they went and got Joe Madden. He was the best manager in the game with when it came to, to working young players into the major leagues, making those guys feel comfortable. You know, uh, uh, doing all of the things that it took for young players to come up and 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 find success. Craig Council, who was my kind of player, and I think all of us can agree with that. Um, just the the hardworking, understood the game, winner, coming to Chicago. He's the best available manager. Look who won the World Series, Bruce Bochy. Do you think it's a mistake? The guy's taken three teams to the World Series. You compare what the Cubs had with David Ross to what the what the Texas Rangers had with Bruce Bochy. You got a guy that has spent his entire life playing and managing, coaching, working with players. And then you had another guy who was a you know good player and then went on ESPN and Dancing with the Stars. You know, what I'm surprised is where are the Yankees at on this? How did the Cubs beat the Yankees for a guy like this? This move, to me, it lets you know that the Cubs are ready to win. And they weren't satisfied with the way that that damn season ended. And they shouldn't have been satisfied with the way that that season ended. This is enormous. And, and I think that's such a key piece that people need to make sure they understand. I know it sucks to miss the playoffs, especially the way that it happened and how the Cubs kind of flew in under the radar, but I don't know that this move is made if the Cubs had made the playoffs. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know that this happens if the Cubs had not kind of fizzled down the stretch and and missed out with bad series in Atlanta and Milwaukee and struggling against teams like Colorado and getting losing three out of four at home to the Diamondbacks three weeks before the, the season ended. I don't know that this move takes place. and. Nick, I think that this is the perfect alignment. You know, you bring up a good point with the Yankees, but what if you go to the Yankees? Yeah, you got payroll, but what do you have? You have the, the AL East, which is just a monster with the Orioles and the Blue Jays and the Red Sox and the Rays. 
you look at the Guardians and yeah, that would be fun. Indian or let's say Indians. Guardians haven't won a World Series since what the 50s, uh, 40s or 50s. You look at the Cubs, though, it's like, man, I get to take over a team that's going to commit and spend. And you know they're committing because you don't just fire a manager the way this has happened unless you show your commitment. So for him to take over inside the division uh, where he's already won before, he's going to have a better front office, healthier payroll. He's just loaded with talent in the minor leagues right now. This is massive on both fronts and a complete steal for the Chicago Cubs. And oh, it's a, huge, it's a coup. A it's a damn credit. coup. It is. Rick it is a Hoyer. damn coup. This huge is what you credit. do. And think about this in a business sense, Chad. You and I both went to college. You took business classes. Your competition is kicking your ass, right? Yep. yep. And you go out and you, you just get their CEO. Yep. You know, when 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 iPhones, when iPhones were were the were the thing, right? What did Google Samsung went out and hired the people that made the iPhone, right? <laughs> right. And now look at their phones. They got great phones. Yep. Not only does this make you better, but this weakens the team that you've been chasing in the division. Because they're going to hurt not having Craig Council. Yeah, yeah, like, for like sure. you can't say watching him manage games that he doesn't know what he's doing. He no. he does, he's and I'm going to tell he's, he's a, a winner, winner. And I'm going to I I I, I want to tell you this too. I started this channel, and I always liked Rossi, and I still do. Like him as a guy, liked him as a player, liked him when he was the backup catcher and working with John Lester, and I th I thought, well, he's a good manager. I start doing this channel and 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 the people that that hang with us here the the Cubs fans are like Mick you got to pay attention he's not that good and you just start looking and it and it really wasn't glaring at first but then I started noticing man these people Cubs fans they know their shit I was wrong and I bet eventually said that like watching down the stretch you 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 live and die by what you do out on the field um, you, you know what? The bottom line is the bottom line. And, and that's how this, that's how life works. The bottom line is that they didn't make the playoffs. The bottom line is that the bullpen was used in a way where you wore guys out. The bottom line is that the young players, some great young players like Pete Crow Armstrong came in, didn't look comfortable, you know, uh, uh, the, the sitting there and watching, uh, Alexander Canario on the bench for, for day after day after day, you didn't get him in. Right. Um, you know, those type of things, the way that the bullpen was used, that putting Marcus Stroman back in the rotation and not and taking out Javier Assad. You know, it's just like stuff like that. Like who's there's got to be accountability. And that's what's tough about being the manager of a baseball team. But the thing that I looked at with him was I'm going, what does he have to fall back on? What what experience? What, is it that experience as bench coach? Was he bench coach for the Marlins or the Reds or no? Well, it's got to be his time in the minor leagues, right? He spent time in the minor leagues. I put a whole lifetime down there. You learn everything about the game, right? Because you're around really smart people there too. So, of course, he managed games in the minor. No, he didn't. He was on Dancing with the Stars and ESPN. And, and like I said before, it worked with the guys that he played with. It almost felt like the old player manager thing that they used to do a lot. I think the last guy to do it was Pete Rose, but for years they did that. Cubs great Rogers Hornsby uh, player manager did, did okay with that. But that's not how the world works anymore. And then you start to see the guys that had teams progressing, making the playoffs. Torrey Lavello is a young guy, but you know what? He was a minor leaguer. He spent time managing in the minor leagues. You got to, you've got to cut your teeth somewhere. With that said, I could see David Ross staying in the game, You know, maybe being a bench coach somewhere. Uh, you know, going to, you know, maybe whatever, and eventually being a really good manager. But I just don't feel like he was ready to win a World Series. And if you're not ready to win a World Series, if your expectations are coming up one game short, then your expectations suck, right? You're, you you look at the Yankees were one game worse than the Cubs. They're They're, you know, pulling their hair out and they're angry and disappointed. And it was, and it just kind of felt like, well, what do we think? 
Do we think being one game better than them, that's the worst season they've had in like 100 years or whatever, <laughs> you know, or like 25 years? And then, and then you know, we're like, hey, you know what? We were one game. No, you have to be looking to not just get into the playoffs, but win the whole damn thing. This type of move is the type of move that got the Cubs to finally break the curse when they went out and got the best of the best. When you walk into the building now and you got Craig Council managing, that's telling everyone there that our expectations are getting another another ring. Yeah, they're, everybody's on alert now. And and I see a couple of comments and somebody talking about the Brewers not bringing him back. He was under contract with the Brewers. Like he, that's why the Guardians had to get permission to interview him. If he was a free agent, you don't have to get permission. Um, but the Guardians had to go ask in order to be able to interview him for that spot. Um, but this is this is insane. Um, I I want to reiterate again: in professional sports, there are windows of opportunity to to win. It, it's nearly impossible to win year after year after year after year. Eventually your contracts run out. Somebody doesn't pan out. Something happens. Another team catches you, whatever the case is, but eventually you just fizzle, but you have opportunities and windows as organizations in professional sports. This is the window for the Cubs. You've got the opportunity with all the prospects. You've got some guys who are already locked into positions three gold glove players on the team currently. Uh, you've got a couple of young guys with Justin Steele, uh, Assad, Jordan Wicks. Uh, there's Cade Horton also. you got some guys with some arms. You've got all this talent. And you've got to figure out a way to combine the, the veteran guys, the big names, the free agents, the strong bats, the strong arms with this load of talent. And you got to either spin the talent and get somebody or you have to play the talent and let them show their worth. Then you got to go spend your money. But a lot of times happens in professional sports is you get organizations or franchises who have that feel good moment. And they just say, you know what? We can't get rid of this guy because, man, Rossi's a cub guy. You know, he won the world series with us. He hit a damn home run in game seven. Uh, he put a team together this year with us that, you know, they didn't make the playoffs, but they probably exceeded expectations a little bit compared to what a lot of people thought going into 2023. He's not bad. Um, we're going to give him another chance in 2024. And the Cubs front office said, hell no. This is our window. This is our chance. This is our opportunity. And they made a tough decision. And unfortunately, those tough decisions don't always get made with teams and franchises, and organizations across you know, whether it's collegiate athletics or professional sports, those windows don't, they don't get, the opportunity isn't seized enough. So just a huge, huge hats off here, again, to the front office and, and Hoyer and Ricketts uh, and everybody who made the decision. And I know it's coming at Ross's expense and we all love Ross as a person um, and are thankful for what he did as a player and an okay job as manager. But when you have this window, I mean, think about it, Mick, last year and in the middle of this year, would you have said the Cubs are a World Series for? No. Yeah, Not I mean, at all, I, right? Not at I, all. I mean, but now yeah. they are because you don't sign counsel and show that kind of, hey, this is what we're doing and establishing ourselves for next year without also knowing that you're going after big names and you mm -hmm. just put all the other bidders on alert. That hey guys, we're we're in the mix. We're coming after your guy for 2024 and beyond. Yeah. Hey, you, and that, I think that's a great point. And and I know some of you guys get on Tom Ricketts and the Ricketts family, and you say they don't spend money. I, that's that's not true. I mean, the Cubs are one of the highest payrolls in baseball. I don't know about the value of some of those contracts, you know. But um, but this, and you make the the point you just made is exactly it. Five years, forty million dollars for Craig Council. So what you're saying is exactly what I would be pitching to free agents. We just went out and got the best manager that we could possibly get. This guy isn't off of, you know, ESPN. This guy was with Milwaukee, our biggest competition. And when, and if you remember this, Chad, and I'm, I'm sure you do, Cubs won the World Series. You know what they did the year before they won the World Series? Is they went to the Cardinals and they took two of their best players 
and they paid him to come be Cubs. So it was like, you know, the the year before, uh, we 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 had the battle and and Schwarber hit the home run and knocked him out of the playoffs. And then to add insult to injury, or maybe you know put a night put salt in the wound, go out there and take two of their best players, and then that helped the Cubs get over the hump and win it all, right? You're you're strengthening your your side and you're weakening their side at the same time. And one thing that the Cubs have done with this contract is that they've spent money and they're showing by going out and getting Craig Council, who yeah. is honestly one of the best in the game, that they're ready to make a move and that they're not settling, like you said. Uh, and then the other part of it is when they go out to, to, to talk to free agents and you know, how many people have been on the chats and you guys have been fantastic. And, you know, we try to respond to every comment that you make. You, you, you say, well, you know what? We're glad that Marcus Stroman opted out because a lot of you guys really didn't like Marcus Stroman, even though he, he pitched well in the first half, but then how the season ended and, you know, some of the other stuff that goes along with him. But you're going, well, now what, right? He opted out. You got $21 million that you can put towards a pitcher. But what if the Yankees won them? What if the Red Sox won them? What if the Dodgers won them? How are you going to separate yourself like when John Lester was a free agent, well, you separated yourself by getting Theo Epstein, who he trusted and he knew and he won a World Series with in Boston. And then he had Theo over there going, look, we're here to win this thing. We're going to do this. We're going to build it around you. Here's your player profile. Here's what we think that you bring to the table. Jed Hoyer was a part of all of that. And by having Craig Council, I think the selling point is going to be a lot more realistic when you're talking about getting – the front end guys that it's going to take to win. And, and as good as the Cubs are with, you know, some of the players that they have to build around, including a gold glove winning middle infield, that's damn good. And without the shift they're I think they're the best in baseball with Nico and Dansby defensively. And then all of a sudden you've got the, the minor league player of the year for defense, not the gold glove winning guy. I'm talking about if you picked one guy in all of baseball and you said he's the best defender, that's the guy that the Cubs have in Pete Crow Armstrong, Hollywood Pete, for center field, okay? Or maybe it's just I – I just don't know how you don't play the guy there. You know, then go out – are you going to bring him back in Bellinger? Well, if I'm Bellinger and I'm seeing this, I'm going, you know what, do I really want to leave right now when, it, when, when things are really starting to heat up, when the Cubs are ready to make their move, when it's obvious that they – give a shit about winning and losing no i want to stay don't you want to stay and be part of something like that yeah yeah it's remarkable um you know i i'm just still blown away because i'll never forget where i was <laughs> when the joe madden stuff broke i'll, I'll never forget where i was and and it's kind of like this with uh with craig council and i was just kind of looking at some of the things and different stats and whatnot and just the fact that the Cubs said it best, Mick, a coup, it's a damn coup. The, the fact that they pulled this off and nobody had any idea it was happening until it was done is straight remarkable. I mean, the Guardians hired Stephen Vogt today as their manager. The Mets have brought in Carlos Mendoza. Uh, Council was possibly talking with the Astros about everything. And then all of a sudden, it just kind of got real quiet and everybody said there's some mystery team uh, that has a manager already that apparently has interest in working on a deal. And then it pops up that, that the Cubs are the ones doing this. And, and if you look at what he's done, I, I know a lot of people, and I even said this, you know, earlier about 15 minutes ago is that the only knock on council is that he never won a pennant with the brewers, but guys, he, he took, a Milwaukee team with one of the lowest payrolls in the major leagues uh, to the playoffs five out of the last six times. He keeps winning the division. And also, Mick, remember a, a couple of months ago, and I, I don't think this is true. I think this is more just uh, a, a little bit of a bluff from the team. But do you remember a couple of months ago where the story surfaced about the Brewers actually checking other cities for relocation? Yeah, like, I do remember that. Again, you, do you think the Cubs are ever going to be checking for relocation? Hell no. They're not checking for it. Like, Craig Council looked at this and said, Ricketts and Hoyer are committed. It sucks for Ross, but I want to manage at a place where Wrigley Field, the fans, the support, 
the loyalty, the energy, uh, everybody shit up in the games and it's nuts, especially when you have a competitive team. And he said, that's where I want to be. And there are other teams such as the Guardians. They, they have good fans. Cleveland's a good baseball town. The Mets, you know, they've been begging to win for for the last few years, and the Braves and Phillies just keep stonewalling them. Um, the Astros, I mean, they've made, what, seven ALCS in a row or something like that, six in a row. Um, he had his options, and and is using the Chicago Cubs. Council, yeah. and it makes a statement, it does, and I can't reiterate enough how big that is from the Cubs laying out to the entire Major League Baseball landscape. Like, hey, this is our window. And the only the only thing for counsel, though, and he had to know this, this hire and what it means and what the Cubs are likely to do, I would imagine, with parlaying this hire into what they're going to do in the offseason and with free agency and trades and winter meetings and so forth, this is going to be a spot where there's going to be a ton of pressure on counsel. Like, he... He's going to experience expectations and pressure like never before, but it's, you know, for him, that's a privilege. You know, he earned that right to get to that point in his career to where he's this kind of a name. And, you know, when you talk about some of the guys that, that he's going to have and that he can work with and shape, I mean, if he's got low payrolls, that means he's working with guys coming up through the system or guys who maybe had underperformed at one point in their career and they got cheap contracts. And yeah, you're, you're talking about guys like Morell if he doesn't get traded and shaping him. PCA out in center field, working with that guy, building his confidence. Uh, Canario that you talked about. Uh, there, there's just so many opportunities here. The players ought to be thrilled as well just because of what Council has proven he can do with a, with a team and with a system and with very dollars to spend, which now he's going to have a, a much heftier checkbook. He's got a 531 winning percentage, uh, 707 and 625 in the big leagues, 92 and 70 last year. He has had one, no, make that three losing seasons, his first two in Milwaukee, and then uh, two games under 500 in that 2020 year. Since then, Milwaukee's finished first, second, and first in the central, but they've been in the race. They've obviously had to deal with, uh, the, you know, payroll stuff because, you know, they don't want to spend a lot of money, uh, do the, the brewers. And, and now, you know, that this feels like a, another, um, it, it, this feels like another one of those payroll things for the Milwaukee brewers where they're, you know, where they didn't want to pay them. And, um, I honestly, I just can't. I, I still just can't believe this. I think that this is such a good move. I just, I just felt like down the stretch and and the way that the the young players were being questioned and you know, well, what, what are they doing? You know, why didn't Matt Mervis come in and perform and and you know and just Canar Canario on the bench, you know, and he has like six runs batted in in his in his first start and then he's just back on the bench again and. You know, Pete Crow Armstrong, who I've seen, and I know a lot of you guys have questioned me because, um, because you know, I, I was so big on him. It's because I've watched the guy play, and I'm telling you, I saw all these guys come up. The ones that won the World Series, the ones before that, I mean, I've seen him. I know. And he can play. And, and it's creating an environment where young players get to the major leagues and, and can mix with the, the veteran guys and be successful. Uh, but you could feel down the stretch just the the air coming out of the balloon for the Cubs, and um, if and in professional sports, when you have the opportunity to make a move like this, you got to make it. You know, if if you got an opportunity to make your team better and beat you know your your arch one of your arch rivals, uh, then you got to do that. You know, and and that's that's what this move says to me, and I. If I was Jed Hoyer, I would have done this as well because this may be the last chance that you have. You know, like this might be the last chance that you have to to win. You know, you were with the with, with the Padres and came back to the Cubs. You were with the Red Sox, but you've always been Theo Epstein's right hand man. Now it's time to stand on your own and do it yourself. And if there's one thing that I know that Jed knows, and and 
anyone in the organization learned being around Theo is what separated him from any other executive in baseball that I've seen is when he had the opportunity to go out there and get elite talent, difference makers. He would seize that opportunity. You know, when they made the trade with the Yankees to get Chapman, that turned out to be one that eventually won the World Series for the Cubs. That was the biggest move that they made that year. He had the opportunity, and he got it done. He wasn't going to let it slip away. Um, you know, they did that with the players that they drafted and developed. When they went out and got John Lester, he wasn't going to take no for an answer. And no. though you, it takes two things. First off, you got to be right. So, you, 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 you know, when you go and you say, hey, this guy can make a difference. Put all your eggs in that basket and go for it. You know, and I think that that's why the Cubs won the World Series. That got them over the hump. They also were able to take their best minor league talent, bring it through the system, and then when they got to the major leagues, those players were ready to contribute. That is also why they won. And, and, and being Craig Council in Milwaukee, you have to work in your young players. You just don't have the the – luxury of going out and signing free agents every year. And you look at the players that the Brewers have, the rotation that they have, they, they developed the aces of that staff. Uh, when you look at the position players, yeah, they went out and got Yelich, but the, uh, the bulk of that team is guys that were drafted and developed and you got to get those guys in there too. So this to me is just, I mean, and I know a lot of you guys are saying the same thing in the, in the comment section and keep on commenting, but I can't believe it. I mean, I, I, I just think that this is huge. So here's some numbers for you, Mick, real quick. Just I'm trying to scramble and, and pull up different side thing is all this stuff is, is breaking as of, what, about 40 minutes ago, and we've been on here for just barely over 30. A lot of questions around uh, the salaries and who was getting paid what and so forth. David Ross um, was sitting on a two-year, $5 million contract, so $2.5 million per year uh, for David Ross if you're comparing numbers. The highest-paid manager in Major League Baseball, Mick, uh, and I got to be honest, like I don't really track managerial contracts. Right, you know, right. we know We know what players get paid because that's always the big number. Um, but from a manager perspective in Major League Baseball, I truthfully didn't really know what a lot of people would get paid. Um, the previous leader, as far as the highest paid manager in major league baseball was Terry Francona. And he was getting four and a half million per year. Uh, reports are that uh, according to this, a source told MLB.com that the brewers had a longstanding multi-year offer on the table that would have made council the highest paid manager in baseball. So that means that it would have been in the neighborhood of $5 million per year. So let's say if you say multi-year, four or five-year deal, $20, 25000000 million. And the Cubs just come flying in and say eight year or five years, $8 million a year, $40 million contract. Like that's how, to me, that blows me away because the Cubs just came in and said, look, we're going to almost double the highest paid manager in Major League Baseball. Terry Francona, who just departed, we're going to almost double what he was making with the Guardians to bring you into Chicago, and it's going to be $3 million a year more than what the Milwaukee Brewers are willing to offer. And honestly, as much as we kind of rag on the Brewers with the low payroll and they want to leave town and their fans don't show up and the Cubs take over, reading that article, and if that is true and those sources are right, props to the Brewers on knowing what they have and trying to keep a guy in town. I mean, five million for a small market baseball team, that, that's a pretty big deal from the managerial perspective. And the Cubs come in instead and say, you know what, we're going to basically uh, go nuts here and kind of pull a New York Yankees type deal and give you something you can't, you can't say no to. And by the way, I mean, again, I'm assuming here, but by the way, we're going to be very active this offseason. We're going to try to sign free agents. We're going to try to make trades and bring in some big names. You got a load of talent in the minor leagues who are major league ready. Um, let's go. Let's do this. We're committed. Here's $8 million a year, which, again, is $3.5 more than 
than the previously highest paid manager in Major League Baseball. Yeah, that's great. And, um, you know, comment here, you know, the most successful manager in um, Brewers history. Thanks, Mark. Um, and that's pretty impressive stuff, you know. But but if you want to win, and, and, and that's the cost of winning. And then I don't think this is going to affect the money that the Cubs are spending on talent. No. I think that this is an indicator that the Cubs are ready to spend money on talent. I'll never forget this. Uh, when I, I remember getting to know Tom Ricketts when he bought the Cubs, and we all we just have a lot in common, you know. We're we're both big college football fans, and so we we talk college football, and and uh, we love the Cubs. And he's been a Cubs fan long before he owned the team. He's a down to earth guy, and he was so excited when they won the World Series. I I, I remember talking to him about the the minute that Alabama brought in Nick Saban. And having that conversation and then us having the conversation that the minute that the Cubs brought in Theo Epstein and the change in the culture, you know, and, and this to me feels like it's along the same lines. You know, is he worth five million dollars a year or whatever? Well, if you win, damn right, he's worth that much money. If he's able yeah. to get the best out of the players that you have on your roster. Yeah, he is. If he's able to manage the bullpen and not get guys hurt then he's worth it. If the Cubs are in the playoffs, then yes. And think about this. The, the, the Diamondbacks got to the World Series. The Cubs and the Diamondbacks were fighting for that last position to get into the postseason. Cubs yeah. could have done the same thing. When the Cubs were playing their best baseball, they beat Atlanta. They, they could have beaten anybody. You know, the, the, with the middle infield that they have and, 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 and some of the pitching that they had. And, but they didn't. And so now you bring in a guy whose responsibility is getting the team over the hump. I think this is a big deal. And I feel like a manager in baseball is the most important leader of any sports leader. You know, like a, a football coach is important, but, you know, there's so many guys on the field and you got to have a whole staff. And, you know, baseball, as far as in-game managing and decision-making, I just feel like having a manager that – that knows how to win in baseball is the most important, uh, you know, leader on any of the sports and, and look at Bruce Bochy. I mean, can you, have, could you have imagined that we'd say that the Texas Rangers won the world series? There wasn't one point this year where I was going, okay, watch out for the Rangers to win the world series. And you know what? They got into the playoffs and having a guy who knew how to win, it paid off. Yeah. It's all, all the difference in the world, man. I mean, you also can't tell me that Rick Rio would have won the World Series for the Cubs. I will never know. But yeah, you know, I'm sorry, it's nothing against him, but hey, Joe Madden was the guy. Like he had already been to a World Series. He knew what it was like. He knew how to develop players. Same thing here. Like the manager matters. You have all the talent, all the things that you know you can buy and whatever. Look at the New York Yankees. They spend more money. Look at the New York Mets. They've tried everything, right? Uh, they had Terry in there. They had uh, uh, Walter. Now got Carlos Mosa. They've had all these guys in payroll. Look at the Phillies. Phillies had a huge payroll, and they had to fire Joe Girardi midseason. And, and Cubs fans love Girardi, but he wasn't the guy for that team, right? They had to fire him to get him in there. Um, so the manager matters. Craig Council has a proven track record of getting into the playoffs. Um, has he won the big one? No, he he hasn't. But you know what? Dusty Baker didn't either until last year. And the uh, Houston Astros are extremely <laughs> thankful. All yeah, right? you're going to be mad. But, People are going to be mad. Don't yeah. ever compare any. Don't compare him to Dusty. I love that, the Dusty comparisons. Let's, right? Let's let's it. cut the guys some slack here. When yeah. when uh, let let me let me give you this one. I know what you're saying. When Bruce Bochy came from the Padres right. to the Giants, he was still employed by the Padres. The Giants came in and got him, and he won three World Series. Yeah, he was a part of the 98 World Series, right? Yeah, Bochy yeah, he did, was. But, and they got swept. But but they never did anything other than that year as far as, like, going to the World Series. But, yeah, you're right. You come into the to the Giants, and and what, what was 
even believe believe it whatever it was because all the even years they kept winning the world series yeah, every other even the, year yep. yeah until the cubs uh knocked them off in the first Avi round Baez. Yeah, i think correct. still one of one of the biggest hits in cubs baseball history was that Baez home run uh to win that game against the giants one zip oh, it was uh off of johnny cueto yeah barely it, barely over and into the bucket but it was it was in there and and i'll tell you what man that that was that was when i knew that team was not going to lose here here's the thing about that hit though that home run bias hit that would have matched the glen allen hill rooftop home run had it not been october with the wind blowing in oh, out i know left, because I know. he hit that ball <laughs> 500 feet and somehow it only went about 355 or so uh, but yeah, that was, that was huge, uh, from, from bias in that year. And that's, you're, you're right. That's when we knew that team was legit. They were, uh, beast there in October, but, uh, right. biggest thing on this is, um, and I would say my only concern council, uh, monster or huge there for the Cubs, the level of scrutiny and expectations is going to be through the roof now because, again, this offseason, there's going to be signings. There's going to be trades. Uh, you're going to have a very, very good lineup and a not-so-good division. Uh, the Cubs went 83-79 and 79 this year, Mick, and back in the division. So this is not a division that's that hard to win when you're looking at win-loss records. And so there's going to be you know, just kind of that that pressure cooker is going to be notched up a little bit. But, man, if you're not excited about having Craig Council at the helm right now and passing David Ross off to get Council, you're nuts. There's nothing bad about this or the Chicago Cubs. It is huge. You said that there's going to be high expectations, and you're right. And I got to tell you, I love that. You know, yeah, I love it means that. You're a contender. I, I love it. Like, let's have high expectations. You know, yeah. like let's let's do that. Like, let's make the expectations uh, because I think that the guys are gonna. When you come in and you know that there's expectations, you perform up to those expectations. You know, it didn't slow down the 2016 Cubs. You know, they they showed up and 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 loved it, and people knew they were coming. They knew they were coming. They had all the momentum from the playoffs the year before. This is telling everyone that's involved that it's we're here to win now, like I said before. And the Cubs are going to have the opportunity to go out in the free agent marketplace and see what they can get done there. Craig Council has great relationships with his players. They know that when the guys that have played for him, that he's going to pull the right, he's going to pull the right levers. He's going to push the right buttons. And I think that it's going to help the Cubs free agent wise. We know that the Cubs need a pitcher. They've got to replace Marcus Stroman. Um, that that's got to happen. Uh, you know, they also are going to try to get Cody Bellinger to stick around. You know, whether he does or he doesn't, you still got to figure out what you're going to do in that spot. And then we've talked about it. The the biggest criticism that I have, and I'm going back to it again, is that you've got to make the the workplace comfortable for the young guys they got to come in and feel like they're part of the team you can't have them sitting on the bench you can't make it well i'm gonna you know i'm gonna do this it felt like a lot last year like like there was a lot of stubbornness you know no matter how bad hap was in the three hole he's staying there you know well he's our three hole guy you know and 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 so many people were frustrated by that and by the lineups um and i just feel like that you're, you're talking about it, it was it was a good time for a change of philosophy and uh, and someone that comes in with expectations that are to win. And that's what they that's what that's what you're looking at right now. Yeah, 100 um, percent. You know, the, the holes to fill uh, it now. That's what's so great is literally yesterday. Cubs fans are 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 hoping to be in the mix you know, hanging on to every little rumor that comes out about Yamamoto or Soto or Alonzo or Bellinger or uh, Chapman or whoever the case may be. Um, they're holding on to any and everything, trying to make the, the pitch and who you trade and how much you spend and what the payroll looks like and all these things. And 
Nick, I, I tell you, I can't imagine a better, you know, what, three or four days for the Chicago You You keep Al Hendricks. Uh, you keep Don Gomes. Uh, you lose Marcus Stroman, which, in my opinion, is a good thing. Uh, <laughs> you can count. Uh, now you, you've got this opportunity. Well, this so frees up payroll. I mean, it's $21 million that instantly available for 24. So, just look at opportunity. One. It's okay. We do third. Okay. What do we do? Basis PCA starting at Wrigley on opening day in, in March or April. You know, or the, uh, I think it's March, right? But um, it's team out there, you know, with stroke, uh, what do you do with, with the rotation? Do you add the big arm or, or a, a tier two arm to go with what's already there? It, but it's just so much more exciting you know, because, again, everybody. Hoping and then we're going, right, well, 83 and 79 this year with Rossi. Get a couple of P's we can contend and we can fight and maybe get in there this year for 2024. But now with council, say again, it just shows the commitment and the willingness. Uh, and kind of are established now as a standard. There's not cool with second place. We're not cool with being in the mix in September. We want those guys in September that are wondering, do we get home field advantage in October? Right. Not, not do we get to go play somewhere else in October. We want yep. to know, are we hosting World Series or the, the NLC? Right. Oh breaking up. Br- yeah. Break, breaking up a little bit, kind of going in and out. But I, I got the gist of what you were saying. Love, love the comments, man. Johnny Cocktail, what a great name. Uh, I'm shaking. I'm so happy. Finally, a good manager. Johnny Cocktail. We could call Chad uh, Johnny Anderson over there. Cocktail Anderson. Uh, throw up some more of your comments. Michael says, uh, winning on the ma- on the margins. Check plus. I got you, man. I got you. And I think that this is just, a, it's such a big move right now. Um, the leprechaun man. David Ross is still a good coach. We need better. Let's hope this is a good change. I I just felt like David Ross needed a little bit more time to, um, you know, just before coming into this job. You know, I I just don't think that the Cubs manager's job is where you cut your teeth. That's the that's the, you know, the the knock to me on David Ross. I still think that he has the potential if he sticks with this. And he's and he's going to be a baseball lifer and not go back to ESPN or go back to, um, you know, dancing with the stars and, you know, and doing reality TV and stuff, which he did a really good job of. And people like him there. And and, and he is, a, a, a you know, a person that's likable. I mean, I saw a video of him. It was the anniversary of of him being on Saturday Night Live uh, and, and doing skits on SNL after the Cubs won the World Series a couple of days ago. And I thought, you know, this guy. Brings a lot of energy. He's funny, you know. Uh, it it hasn't. I didn't feel like worked out as a manager yet. But if he sticks with it and it's something that he wants to do long term, don't be surprised if he doesn't eventually become one of the better managers in the game. That's just not where we are right now. That's just not where we are with him right now. It just it just wasn't working. Sorry, I mean it just wasn't. So I'm with you. Um, I think that uh, it, it's a good change for this team. And um, and Tiger fan says uh, this is going to be a step forward. I agree with you on that. Um, Joseph, he kind of agrees with me. Knows how to manage a young team. You know that 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 is so vital to whoever's taking this job over because today, and I don't know when it's going to happen, but the Cubs are going to have to make a decision if they're going to keep Jonathan Perlaza and Luis Vasquez, and if if it's already been announced that those guys are added to the 40 man roster, then, then it's happened, but you can't let those two guys walk. Vasquez is your future shortstop backup. He does. He, he, he is a major league shortstop and he's a guy who you want behind your shortstop Dansby Swanson in, in case something happens and you need him there. You know, you, that's why you draft and develop these guys. Um, and then Jonathan Perlaza, um, Jonathan Perlaza, you know, he is a guy who hit 284 
with like 25 home runs and 85 runs batted in right around there after he did the same thing last year in double A, did it in triple A last year. That's going to translate to the big leagues as well. He's a, he's a switch hitting outfielder with power and he's clutch. Uh, and we saw that in the playoffs a year ago uh, when he was in double A. You know, and you say, well, what does that matter? Well, go back and look at the Diamondbacks and, and look at some of the guys that contributed to their World Series run. And you're talking about players who were in the AAA World Series last year. You perform there, you get that experience there. It's going to translate into the big games that you have at the major league level. So uh, cool my air. Rock and roll, baby. Look at that. How about that? The dog. <laughs> Chad, okay. Chad's a big dog guy. Dog I that am. looks like my old dog Poncho with um, sunglasses on. It does. Ponch. It does. It does. <laughs> That's awesome. Great, great uh, avatar there. Uh, I love what Rob says here. Uh, Madden to the Brewers. You know, <laughs> and it is a, a good question, though, not Madden, um, but it is a good question. Where does Ross go? You know, does, is he a bench coach? Does he uh, grab a job somewhere? Does he take? Does a he year stay off? in the game? Does he go back and do reality TV? Does he go back into the booth? Right? Yeah. Do you think that he's? Do you think that my my feeling is is that he's got to decide if he wants to do baseball as his career, or if he just had his dream job? You know, he got to manage the Cubs, and it didn't, and it ended like this. And now you go back and you do TV and stuff because he was great on television, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's a good question. Um, and you're right. He he didn't quote unquote work his way up. And have you ever noticed? I mean, it, it seems like this is always the case where manager or former catchers are just <laughs> hey, always hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, Zane's a Brewers fan. We don't want Madden. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the comment of the day right there. <laughs> Zane, <laughs> that's from that's from our Brewers friend. Thanks, Zane. Zane. Uh, Zane saw the breaking news and chose violence this afternoon. Is what he did. <laughs> you know Zane, what I'm I, 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 if I was Zane, I'd be pissed too. Um, especially if uh, if the Brewers were willing to make Council the highest paid manager in baseball history. And and he told him no because the Cubs were willing to almost double uh, the contract that Terry Francona had with the Guardians. Um, yeah, I mean you're right about Rossi. I mean, what what do you do in that situation if you're him? Um, because yeah, he he's just one of those guys that um, I don't know. It's one of those things where catchers, yeah, you know, they're always looked at as oh they're the next manager. Think about what you know, Brad Osmus. Everybody talking about how great he was going to be. And that kind of fizzled out. Never did anything, you know, super with the Tigers. Um, got canned. He got the Rick Renteria treatment as the manager of the Angels because Joe Madden became available. So the Angels hired Madden. Um, Yadier Molina. Everybody keeps talking about him and being a future manager, all these things. Um, so I, I don't know. Uh, it, it just seems like catchers are always the instant, oh, they're going to be a manager one day. And they don't really work their way up a lot of times, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, you know, it's just one of those things with, uh, with David Ross that, uh, it sucks. It, it does because I think everybody has that like feel good story and feeling from, uh, the world series team, the John Lester relationship, knowing all the players came back, managed the players, um, was the first manager, uh, through COVID and then, you know, one quote unquote won the division in that shortened, weird, stupid year. Um, you know, then all the guys that got traded or left or became free agents, whatever the case was. And and it just never panned out. Like if you watch the Cubs under David Ross, there was never a time where I looked at it and go, the Cubs are a hundred percent trending in the right direction. Like things are are moving forward and things are getting better. And some of that has to do with you know, payroll or the Cubs talent or whatever the case may be. But this year, you know, there were a lot of decisions made that that weren't very good. And that's what kind of messed the Cubs up um, down the stretch. And we've talked about it on this channel between the usage of the bullpen, not letting certain guys play, being stubborn and keeping certain guys in the lineup or not putting guys in the lineup. And it just seemed to always kind of backfire on the Cubs as good as they were in July and August and making that run at the trade deadline and belly got hot and the Cubs were fantastic. And then the final three weeks, 
um, everything just kind of went to shit. So let's look at some of the comments. Um, Michael there. Yeah, I agree. Struggled with lineups, matchups, running, um, getting arms up and ready. Um, a hundred percent. I mean, the Cubs were losing guys left and right. It seemed like, um, on the pitching staff and especially in the bullpen, um, Alzali, you know, fizzled there at the end of the year, had to go on the DL or the IL. They call it now. It'll always be the DL to me. Always the um, DL to me yeah, too. Yeah. I can't get over that one. <laughs> um, it's such a little thing, but I just can't get over it. Um, yeah, Rob, I'm with you. We're, we're going to miss Ross. A um, lot of upside potentially, but like Mick says, upside if he wants to make it his career. He, This was his first job. He came from being the guy in the booth. You know, that kind of the same thing. Did, didn't Aaron Boone just go from the booth to the Yankees? Exactly. And, it, and the Yankees have a press conference set up for tomorrow. And uh, one uh -oh. of our, our guys... Um, <laughs> Frank, Frank LaSalle was like, there were people there that ex thought maybe they were going to announce Craig Council. <laughs> they, he, he was the secret team. He's, uh, the Yankees were the secet yeah. team. And and here comes Tom Ricketts, you know, just out of the woodwork. Um, Ross can be a bleacher bum and cheer us on and pop 20 bags of seeds while we're winning. That'd be uh, fun. Yeah, Tiger fan. Um, I hear you, buddy. Uh, Phillies fired Girardi middle of the season that came back to bite them in the NLCS. He probably would not have allowed the Phillies to, uh, underestimate the, the Diamondbacks. Well, the James, the Phillies fired, uh, Girardi last year in the middle of the season and the Phillies went to the world series and lost to the Astros. Um, and, and the new manager who got a contract, uh, because of how well the Phillies played in the second half last year, took the Phillies back to the. LCS and they pulled an 03 Cubs. You know, I hate to scar everyone and bring up old memories, but they had a 3 1 lead and they lost game five um, in Arizona. Or was it 2 2? I'm sorry, it was 2 2. They didn't blow a 3 1 lead. It was 2 2. They had the they two won games game five, but they had the two game lead coming back home to Philly. And everybody said, there's no way the Diamondbacks are winning two games in a row at the bank. And what did they do? Uh, they came in and did it. Um, see some others here good year yeah, yeah yeah uh cubs definitely didn't have a good half you know what's crazy the cubs you you say that so um rob here says the cubs definitely didn't have a good first half of the season that's partially true they didn't have a good may before september may was the only month of the summer that the cubs had a losing record so april and june were fine and july before the break was fine um, so it was really May was the one that stuck out because I think if memory serves correctly, they were 10 games under 500, maybe eight and 18 right. in the month of May, something not good. And that kind of put them behind the eight ball early. Um, why did they make the move? Didn't everyone say the man's moving? Uh, he's the man moving forward. Uh, I'm not sure what he's referring to there. Well, he's probably to. saying this is that is it they gave David Ross the vote of confidence, like, hey, he's our guy. You know, we're going to move forward with him. And I think that they were going to move forward with him. And I think, but then all of a sudden, you get an opportunity to add someone that's you're a difference a, exactly. maker like this, and you got to yeah. do it. I, I, you're a hundred percent right. That yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. it. That's it. It. What I and we may never know. I would just love to know how this unfolded. Because was it the Cubs reached out to council and just said, hey, how'd it go with the Guardians? And he's like, yeah, you know, trying to decide, well, what if we offered you this? Would you be interested? You know, was it that? Or did council go to Cleveland and say, and then tell his agent, check with the Cubs? You yeah. Know? But I don't know. But I would be so curious to know how this panned out because that's a good point and that. The Cubs gave the vote of confidence to Ross and then did the old 180 a few weeks later, a month later. Uh, something happened. Somebody was clued in somewhere that Council was interested in being the Cubs manager. And I still go back to the thing I said in the first five minutes of this show today. And that is kudos to the Ricketts and to Jed Hoyer for making the tough decision and understanding the window of time that's available. The roster you have, the money you have, the the opportunity you have, and making that tough decision. I I could not imagine the phone call to David Ross either yesterday or today. Could not imagine having to make that phone call. You know, you know how it would sound? 
This is it. It's not about you. It's not you. It's, it's me. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I the feel like you've breakup. used that one before, Mick. I, I've had it used on me before. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> it's not you, Mick. It's me. No, I'm just kidding. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Some. This is a great comment, though. Jake throws it up there. Uh, he said Ross is going to be our next voice. <laughs> <laughs> He's welcome to be on the ba- Cubs baseball channel. So, I, do you He's think talking he- about the the reality show, The Voice? Oh, what? that's no, what he's talking I, about. It, I was maybe, thinking like the, no. like he like put him in the TV box, like I with Boob Shambi. Yeah, well, that's what happened to Girardi. Uh, I think Craig Council I, for some reason. I think that that Boog is Craig Council's one of Craig Council's kids. Is he's like the Godfather too? Really? So I wonder, yeah, because I, I remember running to him at a restaurant years ago and he was like, he, he was out with her um, at uh, Oregano's in Arizona. And um, I, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure, you know, so who knows? Maybe, you know, maybe there's a connection there. I, I, whatever it took to get him, I'm excited because this is exactly the type of move that you make when you're ready to win. It just, this, uh, I don't know. I'm speechless to be honest with you. (laughs) And, and what we're going to see, um, you know, a lot of pressure also now is on Ricketts and Hoyer because they made this commitment to council and you can't make that commitment to council. You can't get the fans this excited with making this much of an, an earthquake. Like it's on the seismograph uh reading you can't make this kind of move without making some plays on some big names out there and so you know we talked about expectations and pressure for council that'll come and that'll be there in march and april but it's right now shifted to ricketts and hoyer because okay you hired council you didn't hire council to manage what we got you hired council to manage what we're going to have so what is that? And so they're going to have to, they're going to have to pull their, pull the strings and wheeling and dealing and making moves and, and whatnot out there. But it's, it's going to be an extremely exciting 30, 45 days um, as a Cubs fan. I'm going to throw Mike's comment up here. He's a look at his managerial record in the playoffs. They did get swept away this year, didn't they? They did lost two straight to the Diamondbacks, who went on to win the World Series or play for the World Series. Sorry. Yeah. So, so, so that's going to be something. I mean, you know, that is a that's a fair criticism. I mean, that is a fair criticism, you know. But yeah. I, I really felt like that 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 when the Brewers traded Josh Hader, that it it to me it told the entire team we don't give a shit about winning. Well, did you see? I mean, this is what happens in small markets, though. Like. I don't want to get off track on the Padres here, but you saw what the Padres had to do, right? That nobody talked about because we didn't know about it until a week or two ago. The Padres had to go take a loan for $50 million to be able to make payroll for the final month of the year. So again, they went out and tried to so win. So you weren't surprised that they they didn't pick up Michael Waka's option. <laughs> <laughs> That's what well, you're saying. Well, all I was saying is that you got all these guys. It did seem weird because you got all these guys under contract, you know, um, and you're sitting here with Juan Soto and you still got Fernando Tatis and Manny Machado and you Darvish. Um, and I know you got a couple of guys with, free agency um that are coming up uh, you know snell and, and hater i think are both free agents this year not trade bait but y- you got all this talent um and i was just kind of like you're giving up and i get it it's like make a decision of all right or, but the padres are giving up before they want anything and if you look at the stats and um the pythagorean and all that stuff like basically they were the most unlucky team almost in baseball history this year with how they actually performed and then what the result was on, on the wins and losses. So I was just surprised that they bailed and they were talking about cutting payroll and Bob Melvin now went from the Padres to the giants and you got all these moves happening and Juan Soto becoming available. Then the story breaks about, Oh yeah, by the way, they needed to borrow $50 million just so they could make everything work in the final month of the season. So, 
that's that's the problem. You get in some of these small market situations, and the Brewers another one where you know you, you just don't have you don't have the backing, you don't have the brand, um, you don't have the clout, you know, like the Cubs do or the Yankees do or the Red Sox or the Dodgers or a lot of these teams that have national brands, uh, no matter what, good or bad, they're still a national brand. Well, Chad, I, I, you want to take some calls? Let's do it. Somebody put the phone line up there. Basically, what we'll do is we'll put the phone line up. You guys can call in. Um, just make a comment, and then uh, and then we're going to bounce off and, and talk about it and get to the next one. We're going to see if we get some calls in and talk about uh, Craig Council coming to the Cubs. So it's it's pretty exciting. It, 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 I mean, I'm still just in, like I think a lot of you guys right now, in shock uh that this is actually happening so i i just love yeah. to hear i like what brad's comment yeah brad's comment spot on and we talked about that earlier Th this is joe madden replacing rick renteria nine years ago yeah it, it's the same thing uh it it sucks for david ross uh but you know when these opportunities come up like think about all the managers in baseball right now mick who else would you do this for yeah, not many. I mean, like, you know. right. I mean, I, I mean, Dave, Dave Roberts, maybe. I mean, is he really, is he that guy? Um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> he's just got a huge payroll in Los Angeles. He kind of gets whatever he wants. Um, hey, Bruce Bochy, you'd a hundred percent do it for him. Uh, completely proven uh, in every single thing that he does. Dusty retired. The Cubs obviously weren't going to go rehire Dusty anyway, but I'm just saying a manager like this, like what other managers in Major League Baseball right now, do you fire a sitting manager? Not that mm -hmm. the contract is up. You literally right. call the guy up who is, you know, probably, to be honest, um, getting ready for winter meetings and free agency and trying to sell himself and the team right. to potential, you know, players that you're going to add. And then after that's over, you go take your your 30 days off or whatever it is um, after the winter meetings. And then, you know, middle of January, you're getting ready to to head to spring training in February and then kind of crank back up and get rolling again. And I'm right. I'm just saying, like, you literally took a guy and called him up and said, hey, I know you're probably like scouting and watching Juan Soto tape or you're, you know, thinking about what Pete Alonzo or Cody Bellinger will do for us next year. But unfortunately, you're out of a job. Like there's only so many people that you would do that to in exchange for this kind of level manager. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who else. I mean, council, maybe mm -hmm. Dave Roberts, uh, Bruce Bochy, a hundred percent you would do it for, but who else? I, I, I can't know. think of anyone. Let's go to the phones. See what see what the uh the people say. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hey, can you hear us? Hey, how's it going? This is Alan from San Diego. What's up, Alan? Yeah, hello? Yeah, can you hear us? What's going on? I just want to say the Cubs made a good move signing Ross. Um, I do think it is somewhat how... Yeah, I can hear you guys. Well, yeah, fire away. We're li we're listening. Go ahead, Chad. Can you hear him? Yeah, he's good. Okay, yeah, you're I good. Go ahead, Alan. Came over and taking over a young core. So I think. Sorry, it looks like it's cutting out a little bit, but yeah, I do. I do think it's a good move. I, it does show that ownership is willing to make some major changes. And that's what the Cubs need. They get they need to get back on the map. They're a big market. They need to be, you know, they need to show people that, you know, we are the Chicago Cubs and we make these moves. We are back into this the baseball. We are into the uh, contention again. I think it's a great move by the Cubs. I also think that it shows a sign that, you know, there might be some big free agent signings coming too. It's a serious move by the Cubs. Great stuff, man. Thank you for calling in, and I, and, and we're going to talk about it. But Alan San Diego, he he's right. I mean, I I kind of echo the same sentiments there, and that's uh, Chad, and that it, it's a it's an indicator to the rest of baseball 
that the Cubs are here to stay, that they're they're ready to make some moves. Yeah, you're damn right, man. I mean, all of Major League Baseball just got put on notice. They did. The, like every team in Major League Baseball uh, who considers themselves a contender, they just got put on notice uh, that the Cubs are are going to be for real players here in the offseason and and going forward and that 83 and 79 isn't good enough uh, and that the Cubs are going to do what it takes to win. And that includes making what some of you may consider ruthless or cutthroat decisions. And maybe it is. But unfortunately, in the world of professional sports, you know, we don't get to hoist trophies based on feelings or having our friends be the manager or be the first baseman or be the center fielder or be the scout director or right. whatever position it is. You got to accumulate the best team, front office, coaching staff, all the way down to the ticket taker. Like you've got to put together the best possible franchise and, and it includes everyone. And so that's what the Cubs, you know, have kind of made known is like, hey, we're we're doing this. This is going to happen. Let's go back to the phone lines again and uh, talk about the new manager, Craig Council, coming Hello? to the Cubs. Who's this and where are you calling from? Hey, can you hear us? I think it's uh man, I think the systems I think the system's lagging a little bit. Well, I think uh so just if, for those of you, we want you to call in if you want to drop a comment and, and chat with us and whatnot. We'd love to have you call. Uh you should just because I've had to do this on the phone with other shows with Mick, is that when you call in, you should hear a beep and then you don't need your the YouTube uh to play in the background. You should be able to hear just straight through your phone. So uh, I, I don't know that that was Alan's problem, but I could hear yeah. I could hear the YouTube going on in the background. So just just more of a trying to <laughs> trying to help and yeah, we live. just I just changed the the uh, the set the system, so it could be that too. Could be. Uh, yeah. I just you know we really weren't expecting to be doing uh, a show today like this. You know, <laughs> we just gonna no. just come out hey. here and it's some people start sending me this stuff. And I'm like, you know, is this real? I mean, like I, at first I thought, you know, this is this to me seemed like it was something made up. Like I just didn't believe it. I didn't believe you. You were telling me about it. I said, no, you're full of shit. I said, you're full of shit. I said, no, one of your buddies that gave you a rumor uh, is messing with you or whatever. And then you said, no, it's on MLB trade rumors. Uh, Ken Rosenthal. Oh, my God. Like, obviously, that's not a joke. Um, my favorite here is, uh, I, I love my guy here. Cool. My air with, with the dog avatar, uh, because, and, and he's right. I really wish we had a way to patch in and listen to Milwaukee sports talk right now, because I bet they have lost their shit. I, I can't even imagine what's going through the minds and the mouths of the Milwaukee sports fan at the moment. Uh, cause think about it. The green Bay Packers suck. Uh, Wisconsin Badgers aren't very good. <laughs> and, now, and now Craig Council bails uh, on the Brewers to go 90 miles south to the city of Chicago and the north side. Uh, what a uh, what a brutal, brutal fall season for the uh, for the Milwaukee Brewers. That's all. Wow. Well, any any final thoughts Um from any of you guys in the comments section, Chad and I will give our final thoughts. And I mean, just, I mean, earth shattering news right here. Um, I, I was, I've been waiting all day to see what they do with the 40 man roster. I mean, like with Vasquez yeah. and, and, um, and Jonathan Perlaza, I've been waiting all day. I, I, I just can't believe that this fell at this particular time. I mean, that, yeah, like, um, uh, Deacon Mike, yeah, this Deacon. is legit. <laughs> the Cubs just hired Craig Council, and they moved out David Ross, and they 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 were uh, stealth when it comes to how this happened. I mean, absolutely stealth because no one even knew that the guy was even interviewing. No, it, it was going to the Guardians, or if you didn't like the Guardians, it was back to Milwaukee. And we said this earlier, MLB.com for Deacon Mike and others. Uh, MLB.com said they had rumor and sources telling them that the Brewers had offered counsel 
a multi-year deal that was going to make him the highest paid manager in baseball history. He was going to be paid more than what Terry Francona was in his contract before he retired as skipper of the Guardians. So this wasn't even a, I mean, maybe it is a little bit of a money thing because the Cubs are just blowing it out of the water and saying we're pushing all right. our chips in. But I mean, obviously three million a year more is three million a year more. But I can't help but think some of it has to do with the fact that it is the Cubs, it's Wrigley Field, it's a bigger payroll, it's a bigger market, it's a bigger brand, it's a bigger uh, front office willingness to go out and grab guys here in this offseason that, by the way, this offseason is loaded with names. I Loaded with names. So you, you just can't tell me that that didn't um, play a factor. Did the Cubs overpay? Eight million, like could they have gotten him for six? Maybe, but here's the thing, guys. If the Cubs could have could have gotten him at six, you don't piss and moan about, and I know it's easy for us to say, but you don't piss and moan about a two million dollar gap. And you look back and you go, Man, we didn't get counsel for six million. If we had given him eight, we would have had him. Right. Like you don't make that mistake. Right. Like same thing with a player. If you can get Bellinger for one hundred and fifty million a year, you know, are you going to regret it if somebody outbids you at one fifty five? You know, you that's where you got to figure. And sometimes overpaying a little bit, it prevents you from having to worry about the hindsight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I mean, I just this is such a change of direction move it, yes. this is you know there, there was a lot of criticism about tom ricketts kind of sent out a you know a season ticket holder memo at the end of the year like you know hey we still we really care about winning and we want to do this and you know i saw some of my friends that do stuff and you know they're questioning that and and and, and, and you know they didn't think he, he was being legitimate and, and thought that it was just owner's talk I've never got that impression from him. I, I I really don't. You know, I mean, when they were rebuilding, not only did he come in and rebuild the organization, but he rebuilt Wrigley Field, and then he rebuilt all yeah. of the areas down there around. And he didn't get a lot of help from the 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 city, from the state. You know, like a lot of places do. He did get some, but but there's a there's a lot of you know, like Milwaukee wants a new stadium. They're expecting the that the state and the city will pay for the whole thing. You know, so. You know, that, that's a lot of money. And then, and I'm sure, you know, they're, they're, they're not struggling for cash or anything, but it just took a while to get to the point where the Cubs were like a legitimate contender. And then they wrote it out too long, yep. but there was a loyalty that we all had to that team. We wanted, we, we knew that, that, um, you know, that the Cubs um, should have won more than they did. You know, and I've questioned that. I've questioned that on Twitter. Every time I see the Houston Astros in the World Series or in the pl playoffs making a run, you know, the Cubs should have been there too. And, and, and you know, and that's where, where was that, you know? And so, um, and, and, I, and then you're rebuilding and then you're kind of moving back in that direction. All right. Um, Chris says that yeah. Hoyer – released a statement do you have that i've Chad? got it here yeah can I've you pop it. it on the screen uh yeah give me one second here i can do that Let's see what see what he has to say but but anyway going back to my point as we get the you know the statement up it it none of us expect that the core and what the cubs were building and winning that world series in 2016 to collapse as fast as it did i think all of us figured that the that the cubs would be a perennial contender and that just wasn't the case. All right, well, let's pull it up, Chad, and, I'll, and you can read it if you want. <laughs> sure. So, uh, Hoyer, today we made the difficult decision to dismiss David Ross as our major league manager. On behalf of the Cubs organization, we express our deep gratitude for David's contributions to our club, both on and off the field, first as a player, then as a manager. David continually showcased his ability to lead. David's legacy will be felt in Chicago for generations and his impact to our organization will stack up with the legends that came before him going forward our major league team will be managed by craig council and we look forward to welcoming craig at wrigley field early next week so 
that's it for for from Hoyer, uh, and then just more information about counsel and who he was talking with and uh, and so forth. But right here it says Meg Joe Torrey previously had the managerial salary record, earning eight million dollars with the Yankees. Um, but his last season in the dugout was 07 and salaries have uh, leveled off since then. And there's the piece about Tito, you know, was getting four and a half million before he retired as manager of the guardians. So shocking news, interesting news, um, encouraging news as well, even though it comes at Ross's expense, uh, man, just what a, what a shocker. Um, just unbelievable. Uh, now it, it it's it's shocking until you think about what it takes to be great. It's shocking when you until you think about everything that you have to do to win in a super competitive market, man. Check you know, that Tiger out. fan, I'm sorry about the lag, bro, but great comments there. Let's go kick some ass. I mean, I, I that's what I'm waiting for. Yeah, you mentioned this earlier, Mick. Um, this was more about council's availability than it was about Ross. Right. And it was the Cubs realized they had a shot at Craig council and made the move to upgrade. You, you don't always get a chance to upgrade. And a lot of times, Mick, we've seen this too, in all sports, you know, NFL, major league baseball, college football. A lot of times you feel forced to make a move, but then what's available out there is not always an upgrade. Right. Sometimes it's just a straight change of scenery. It's not an upgrade and council's an upgrade and they didn't want to miss on the upgrade. They didn't want to pass on it. So kudos no. to them. But a lot of you guys um, have heard the name um, Crane Kenny, the Cubs president on the business side. Uh, Crane's really good at, at helping out in these situations too. You know, I don't, I know that there's not always an intersection between the baseball side and the business side, but sometimes there is. And uh, just another guy that I've known for a long time. And, and when, when it comes to seizing on opportunities like this, Crane's really good at that stuff. So I, I would not be surprised just having been around for a while to know that maybe that, that it's some, some way he played a, a hand in this as well. But you're right. I mean, when you have the opportunity to change your organization in one fair swoop, uh, you got to do it. And I mean, I just this this feels like the kind of manager that you would expect from the Chicago Cubs. And and you know, we we talked about this on a video last week, and 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 it it was how did the Yankees and the Cubs, the two premier jobs uh, in baseball, have guys with no experience? running their teams. And then a, and a lot of people said, well, you know, they, they, the mat, the front office sends down the lineups these days. And it's, it's, you know, I don't know how true or, or, or not true that is. I, I know that the front office does have a say a lot more than they used to on how guys are used in games and stuff like that. But, you know, the front office uh, can tell a, a manager stuff, but then you, you still got to, um, you know, you still got to go out there and, um, you know, and, and, and be able to manage situations during the game. So, Hey Mick, real quick. Um, are you cool? My air in disguise, because this guy's now commenting about Ross getting farted in his face. <laughs> <And that's> what, <laughs> I've brought that I, up a few times. I, I feel like you're, you're, cool he watched our show. <laughs> he's, he's part of our crew. I feel I, like look, you're in the comments, Mick. I, I mean, very famous mo moment. What I said was a couple weeks ago, I said, you know, these other guys are grinding it out in the minor leagues or coaching at the big league level or managing, and, and David Ross was getting farted in his face on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> now I feel bad because I don't want to kick the guy while he's down. But it, that was the, one of the most famous farts that I think that's ever been on television before. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't know he, one better. He spun, yeah. they were, do you remember? He was like spinning the, the, the his dance partner upside down, and then as soon as she got like right in his face, she let loose. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh yeah that's you're know right is, you're right that is salt in the wound it's too soon man i'm i'm that, I'm out of this that that's it's crazy because uh he gets more grief about it than she does you know well <laughs> because you don't want to bring that up it. to her what 
Yeah, right. Girls, I've never, I didn't know girls farted. Yeah, you don't want to <laughs> be, so you don't want to be, you want to be a gentleman, right? Yeah. Um, unbelievable. So now what? What do you, what do you think the next move is? Um, have they announced, I'm still keep an eye out on the roster move because I, I, they have to make a roster move today, from what I understand. And I am, um, I, I just, I I, I'm just it. so curious to see what they're going to do with the roster. Yeah, have have not seen it. Um, the Cardinals have claimed Jared Young from the Cubs. That's per okay. MLB trade rumors. So, okay, Cardinals have announced they've claimed infielder, outfielder Jared Young. They also announced their previously reported deal for right-hander Riley O'Brien. That's Cardinals deal. Their forty man is now full. Um, I don't see. Just double checking. That's the only one I see. Uh, other than the council news. Okay. Nothing else so far today. So I'm, I'm just curious. I I'm curious and, and, and I can't wait to, um, <laughs> Jake, think everybody thinks that, uh, cool air now, poor cool air is over there. It's like my burner yeah, account. It is, man. <laughs> it is. I, cool I got to go be mad at you. He's going to be get, mad at you for that. I got it going. <laughs> One. Uh, we're, 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 we're two guys that noticed that there was a very famous fart in the face. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Uh, apparently, Deacon... to Jared Young, though. I, I do like Jared Young. Um, I'm going to be honest, though. Jared Young isn't on the level of the talent that's coming up through the system right now. He's a yeah. great guy. And uh, I was really uh, – and I, I could honestly couldn't believe it, that he got to the big leagues after really losing out of his job when they sent Matt Mervis down, you know, what are you going to do? But the guy, the guy persevered and he ended up getting to the big leagues and, and, and got some time up there. And um, I wish him the best, you know, even though he's going to the Cardinals. Uh, but I, I just, I don't have him on the same level as the Pete Crow Armstrongs and the Alexander Canarios and the Jonathan Perlazas and the Luis Vazquez's and the Owen Casey's and stuff like that. I mean, you're talking about, some difference makers guys you're talking about guys players that are going to get there and they're going to be forcing the cubs to put them on the roster and play them or other teams are going to take them jared young's not i don't think one of those guys that's going to come back and you're going to look at it like like nelson velasquez where you're like okay we just gave up a guy that could lead the league in home runs i, I just don't think it's the same type of thing here yeah i'm, I'm also just looking through some of the other comments um michael waka pass um, uh, that was a, that was a one man show or a, what a couple of seasons type show uh, had a good, but you know what? He did have a decent year for the Padres. True. Um, true. But I, I, you, you're, you're thinking bigger I, fish. I'm, you're you're yeah, thinking I'm, like, look, if we can get, we need to go after Blake Snell or we need to go yeah. after, uh, well, Austin I just think, Nola. I think the Cubs already have enough Michael Walkers on the team. Like, <laughs> You don't need to take chances right now on some of these guys, in my opinion. Um, you know, you got a pretty good rotation. You don't have the, and we've talked about this, you don't have the ace arm, you know. But I want to start out with Steele, Tyon, uh, Hendricks, uh, Assad, Wicks, you know, whenever Cade Horton's ready. Uh, I, I want to bring in a big name pitcher, but I don't want to, start filling the rotation with Michael Walkers. Um, right. That's well, all I'm saying. I, I see what you're saying. Like you're, you're, you're saying we already have Jamison tie on why go get another one. Yeah. Yeah. We've already got one of those. You know, we don't need another one. Um, and I, I just like seeing the younger guys pitch, you know, let them get established, get them some opportunities, get them some innings. Um, I would just at this point, you know, again, I I'll, I'll take what I got from a mid tier uh, or tier two group. And, and I'll just, wait for uh for the big signing you know give me give me yamamoto uh although you know the one thing that does worry me um about this has always been kind of the thing with japanese pitchers is how long their arms hold up because they throw so many pitches yeah like, they just throw so many innings so many pitches i saw something the other day where yamamoto threw like 130 something pitches in a game um i mean it's nuts you know, that that's unheard of here. If, if a manager did that, you'd get run out of town with, with right. the arms and how much money is spent on them. So yeah, I, I'm more looking for that. Or like you said, Snell, um, an Aaron Nola, 
um, you know, bigger names right now than than Waka. Jake Jake can't come in here and rain on my parade when the Cubs just signed Craig Council, <laughs> and then Jake's over here getting excited about Michael Waka. All right, like can't, can't could be, be good. good. That, Jake. I mean, he could. Well, they're going to do something in free agency, but this does change the outlook that I had. Um, just this morning. I mean, this is this is a game changer here. And I think Jake even agrees with you. Uh, we've been on for an hour and 30 minutes. Is there anything else that you that you want to get to? And sorry about the phone lines, guys. I'm going to get that fixed. Um, I think there was some kind of delay that I needed to test through. But um, no, I one thing, um, you know, we don't talk about this enough. Um, you guys make sure you follow us on on X or, or Twitter. Um, cause a lot of times we do try to, to break stuff there as well, or comment, um, or pass along news. We're not always like immediately available, um, on the YouTube to jump on and do videos. We do the best we can, especially Mick. He's a lot faster at it and, and whatnot, but, um, yeah, you know, I, there's going to be a lot of ripple effects here and this is going to create more rumors. It's going to create more people in play from signings and trades and, putting a staff together, you know? Yeah. yeah. Tommy wow. Ottavi here, Andy Green, um, you know, uh, Mally. What about, what about yeah, Mally John Mally. Yeah, yeah, I love John Mally. Yeah, uh, it's, it's You know, it's going to be interesting uh, to see the way the council does it. But I was watching Bruce Bochy, and I saw uh, my buddy's brother, uh, Mike Maddox, and I'm watching him manage or coach – <clears throat> you know, and go out to the mound and stuff. And and Mike's been there for a long time. When Bruce took over, he didn't come in and get rid of <laughs> Mike Maddox. He just worked with him, you know? And it was so cool seeing Mike Maddox win a World Series. It, it You know, like all those years, I told Greg this, when I was a kid, he threw me a baseball. Mike did. You know, when he was a pitcher. Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, I want to say he was with the Red Sox, uh, you know. But just how cool that is, you know? Um, so yeah, I don't know what they're going to do with the staff. Obviously I think Craig council is going to probably make a few moves and probably keep some guys. You would, you'd expect them to keep hot of he's done a great job and he probably knows a lot of these guys anyway, cause they play so much. Uh, Ronald wants to know Josh Hader, maybe definitely, definitely go after Josh Hader. I he love is, the lefty closers. Oh man, I just love him. He's just he's sick, man. You talk he about is. the breaking that the, the the breaking balls that he's able to throw and all of that stuff. The guy's a difference maker. Yeah, he is. Um, huge fan of Hater. Yeah, and one thing here too is we we mentioned this on a previous show. Jed Hoyer has a good relationship with the San Diego Padres. I mean, it, it's not like it was a soured situation where he left and it was bad terms. Like the Cubs and Padres have made deals. Uh, yeah, obviously the the Rizzo piece and then you Darvish and yeah, I'm sure there are others in there that I'm not thinking of, but those two are the most obvious ones off the top of my head. But yeah, I mean, this is a situation where with Juan Soto being available um, and then, yeah, you got Hader and uh, Snell, I think are both free agents. I just slam dunk opportunities there for the Cubs if, if they can grab him. Um, you know, Michael Walker going back, I was giving Jake a hard time, but he did have two good years with uh, the Padres. He didn't yeah. he didn't start as many games as maybe you would like, um, mm -mm. low twenties, but uh he did have good ERA, three twenty two. Um, yeah. Got he got he got years. outs, man. You know, yeah, he, he really did, did get outs. He did get outs. Um Hater, you know, Hater sucked in San Diego after the trade deadline last year. Right. He went to San Diego and was awful. Um, don't know what happened. Don't know what the deal was, but he bounced back. He didn't have a good year in Milwaukee either last year, and that may have been part of the reason that he, he got traded. Um, but, yeah, you go back now to this year, uh, appeared in 61 games, ended up with 33 saves, um, a 128 ERA. That, that guy is uh, as good as it gets coming down the stretch. And yeah. I, I would love to see him in Chicago. And that would also bolster Alzali going in into relief. You know, I mean, Alzali is a great pitcher. I love having uh, Alzali in the game. So, you know, that just kind of like, was it, uh, was it Chapman and Dylan Batantis, 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 
I'm screwing up his name. I'm sure. Yeah. But with the Yankees, remember they had just that crazy uh, seven, eight, nine there for a couple of years right. where you get through six innings and those three, it was a guaranteed win. Um, you know, Cub, Cubs could have some serious arms in the pen if you're able to make a deal or get a signing um, like a hater. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, a lot's going to change. Yeah. You know, cra- counts will be introduced next week. And, um, uh, this is this is the this is this is the Joe Madden move that really shook the world when the Cubs made it. This is the same type of move to me, the same yeah. exact type of move. And this is you know what whether it works or it doesn't work. The fact that they're pulling the trigger tells me that they're trying, and um, I, that's all you can do. I think it's going to work though. Yeah, um, looking at the comments. Big hell no to Josh Donaldson at third base. Yeah, no, he but you know, he was a Cubs minor leaguer. We yeah, traded him to yeah, the he's, A's. He's bounced around to, you know, he he's like Rich Hill in the Immaculate Grid. Uh he's played for a bunch of different teams. Especially yeah, yeah. Lately. He's a good easy answer. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. Still just if if you guys are just getting here, make sure that you like and subscribe. And uh, a lot of you guys have. We we went over 2,000 subscribers uh, today, so we appreciate all you guys for that. I'm going to do a uh, – I'll tell you what, uh, Chad, sh- you want to give away a, a Nico Horner bobblehead, though? I mean, what better way to celebrate Craig Council than <laughs> grabbing, a, grabbing a gold glove second baseman bobblehead I got uh, a, to uh, hand I out? Got a, I got a Nico Horner and a Nico Horner bobblehead right here. Slam dunk. Look at that. I love Nico too, by the way. Won a gold glove. Yeah. Were you surprised that all three guys won a gold glove? Uh, The only one in question was Hap. And I mean, it's not, I mean, he's won it before. So it wasn't a surprise. I, it just felt like Dansby and and Nico were going to get it. um, The way they played together all year long, just felt like that was going to happen. And then props to Hap as well, getting his second gold glove. That's awesome. Crazy. Yeah, that I forgot how many it was. Uh it, there's not many teams. I, I don't want to butcher the stat, but not many teams have ever had three gold glovers uh on one roster in a season. Hard to do. Yeah. No, well, it's the first time. No, it's the, first, it the time first time for the Cubs. It's the first time yeah. for the Cubs. I thought I'd seen it. It's happened before, but yeah, first time for the Cubs. Okay. All right, let's do this. Then, then we're getting off after this, but we're going to do this race right here. Uh, to get qualified, you got to get in the message here, and then and then write Nico. And I guess we'll, how many ducks are we going to do? Twenty first twenty. I, I missed the last duck race, so I, I'm not even sure how it works. To be honest with you, well, just, I missed the last duck race. I'm I'm here to watch. All right. Well, you talk while I'm getting. I'm going to get everybody loaded in, and then you're going to be. This is going to make your day. You think that that uh, having Craig Council as manager is exciting? Wait, <laughs> make I. I've never been so happy to miss lunch than what I have today. <laughs> I, I'm over here starving. I got to be honest. I'm over here starving. I'm drinking cold coffee just to keep something in my stomach. Uh, what we got? We got a lot of Nikos already. One, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Let's just do the first 20. All right. Here's 12. Eight more. Can Council play third base, too? We're going to go player manager, Rob. Throw in the Nikos. There you go. There's 13. Throw in Nico. I just, you keep, you just keep, you keep occupied because I got to load. You got to load them. I got to load, load, load everybody in here. Deacon Mike, um, your insurance guy must be a, I mean, a damn model. Uh, just an unbelievably looking guy that's good with the women, right? Uh, let's see. Hope problems. <laughs> Player manager combo. He got fired. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Cool my air. There he is. There's Mick. That's Mick's burner's account. He's in for the duck race <laughs> over right. here. Uh, <laughs> Pete Rose. Yeah, that's other player manager. Had that happen before. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. 
lady GM's in, Jake's in. I, I'm still shocked. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I keep I'll also just refreshing uh, MLB trade rumors just about every two or three minutes just to see what's <laughs> going on, you know, because <laughs> you're right, Mick. I mean, with the 40 man, it's one of those deals where something's going to pop up and nobody's going to be talking about it because it's going to be Craig Council reaction day uh, for the next, you know, week. And they have not said when any kind of press conference will take place. So make sure you stick with us. Uh, we'll, you know, push that on Twitter, which is X, um, at Broadcaster Mick, at This Chat is Real. Uh, we'll make sure to get that to you. We'll be doing Cubs reaction videos all week long as well because more is going to come from this. This Cubs channel is going to be unbelievably busy over the next uh 30 45 days uh deacon mike for mick it is at broadcaster mick at broadcaster mick mine is this chad is real this chad is real um yeah the next 30 45 days are going to be insane cubs are going to be a part of just about every conversation you're going to have so many different uh hot stove items coming up here uh now that the World Series is over, this is nuts. And I saw something a day or two ago that said uh, the Cubs were like a sleeper. They were the sleeper pick for Shohei. So the Cubs were... Really? Yeah, I saw that a day or two ago. Um, it was one of those where, you know, a sleeper pick just means to me they're having conversations, which if you're the Cubs, um, you know, you're, you're obviously not going to ignore Shohei you're going to kick the tires but I don't know if that one's actually going to pan out I've always thought Shohei was a long shot for Chicago but you know I guess we'll see especially with Cal he looked great, he look great in that Cubs uniform look great in some blue pinstripes wouldn't he not the Yankee <laughs> pinstripes the blue pinstripes uh is that a hanging Chad no never I've never heard that one before Deacon Mike never heard that before uh, I'm just kidding I like to mess around with you uh let's see yeah, I, I'm with you, Rob, on Shohei. He actually makes me a little nervous, although, you know, so many guys in the modern day game, um, they're just they're having the the Tommy John surgeries and the the tendons worked on and the shoulder stuff. Like they almost go ahead and do it and get it out of the way early on. Um, and he can still bat, you know, and so we'll see. Um, I don't think he's gonna be pitching for at least a year. I think pitching wise, it's 2025. Uh, Chad, if you're the Cubs, who are you trading for Juan Soto? To me, any and everyone's available. Um, you know, PCA would be the hardest one to give up. I think Morell is going to get you the biggest return and potentially has less upside than other guys in the organization. Morell's great. I'm just saying I think he's kind of already there in what he's doing. And I love Morell and I love his energy. But I think that he's more replaceable um, and that you could give up Morell and not have to give up a whole lot else in order to get Juan Soto. But I would say Morell's in that in that package. Um, but yeah, Soto. And the tough part with Soto is you're giving up a guy – for one year um, with council now as your manager, though, it's okay to do it <laughs> for just one year. Cause you're kind of going for it, but it also gives you a year for council and Soto to develop that relationship. It gives you a year to show Soto what it's like to play at Wrigley field day in, day out, be a part of an organization where the fans truly care. My wife is from San Diego and I'm telling you when I go, people treat the Padres <laughs> as like, Oh yeah, I kind of went down to the Padres game for the first, you know, for innings three through seven, and I had some nachos and like this margarita and a bean. It's burrito. not like us, right? Yeah, had I had the carnitas, and then I went to the beach, you know, or I went to the gas lamp, or I went out on my boat, or whatever. Like it just, it's different, guys. Like the Padre fans are not the Cubs fans. It's not the same organization. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I get you. 
uh, with this move, I have no more expectations. Yeah, I get it uh, for sure. I wonder if Alcantara is is trade bait. I'm sure anybody is trade bait, uh, depending on you know what you're getting with Juan Soto as far as you know his commitment and maybe even trying to sign him before he comes. That's what the Braves did. You know, they traded for Matt Olson and uh, locked him up instantly. And what a great deal that turned out to be. The guy hit what fifty four home runs, I think, this mm-hmm. year. Yeah, for the Braves, they let Freeman walk. Freeman had a hell of a year, but it's not like Olson was some like downgrade. I mean, the guy he had damn fifty four home runs this year. Uh, bittersweet at all with Ross being let go. Bittersweet in the sense I just like the guy, um, which says a lot considering he played ball at Auburn. But I still, you know, <laughs> like the guy. Um, <laughs> you couldn't let him slide on that, huh? No, uh, not really. But you know, he still. played in Florida too. All right, yeah. you, you ready? We're good. Yeah, go ahead. All right, All right. this is going to be a two-minute duck race for this Nico Horner bobblehead doll. Okay, this is the Nico Nico uh, Tennessee Smokies Double A bobblehead doll, brand new, never been opened. It was a stadium giveaway. Got Nico on there. That was Nico after he, he hit his first home run. He's he's screaming. I don't know if it really was that, but all right, here we go. Let's get this thing set. Loaded. We're loading up the duck race right now. There's the ducks. Can you see the ducks? Look at <laughs> this. Is see awesome. all the ducks. All right, look, your your names are on there, uh, and 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 initials. Okay. So uh, the, we're all lined up and ready to go, and then and then the winner wins all right let's do ready it. set <laughs> they're this off fantastic how long does this go for well, this is a two-minute race so we can talk about craig council as we watch but a minute hey, i love 40, this i love this minute. chris kender says william Contreras tweeted three <laughs> face palm emojis which <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, they, they, yeah, they're probably not going to like this too much. All right, Alex and Nico. Nico, Nico S. S. Look at Nash Nico up top. To... Nash Anderson. Oh, look out! He's a he's got the white head and the black body. He looks like a vampire duck. And then Nico <laughs> F in there. Here comes Jake H. How about Rob German down at the bottom with the pink duck? <laughs> Is Gus in the back? He's he's a duck inside a suit way is back in the back. Is that Yoshi? Like, remember the dinosaur from oh, Super yeah, Mario yeah, yeah. Brothers? It looks like Yoshi out there swimming around. Paul F. had too much for breakfast. A min- under a minute to go. Look at Bat Duck. Deacon Mike with the Batman duck coming to the front. That is a cool duck right there. It really is. What is Bat like Hat him. dressed as? It looks like a yellow robin. Is that... Yes, and look, look, uh, look at Anthony G is uh, Sherlock Holmes duck going backwards. Now we got thirty-five seconds to give away this Nico Horner bobblehead doll, Lady GM. Look at Lady GM coming from the back, trying to steal this thing late. I'm, I'm picking Jared. Jared's gonna win this thing. <laughs> Nico F for the Nico bobblehead doll. Wouldn't that be something? Nico I don't know who's gonna win. Bobblehead. Lady GM. Rob's hanging in there. Here comes Rob. Paul up top. Lady GM holding, trying to hold him off. Rob. Oh, you're right. Look at Rob. Rob German. Rob German falling back. Uh-oh. Gus, this Here is a Yoshi. photo finish. This is a photo finish. German <laughs> with the win. <laughs> oh. Jordan with the oh shit, here I come. <laughs> How about that for a finish? Oh, that's great. Right, we got to get the uh, got to get the unofficial results. Here they go. Jordan won. Gus was, uh, or A Gus 20 was second. Anthony third. Um, see where you guys all end up. Bryce was fourth. Jake H. Um, let's see. Where was uh, Nash? Nash Anderson was 12th yeah, in the duck 12th. race. <laughs> so, Jordan, you won. Um, just uh, you got to send me your your information and I'll mail this to you, but uh, congratulations. Our first ever duck race. Uh, This is pretty cool. Did you go, what do you guys think of the duck race? I mean, is that a good way to kind of end the Craig council sweepstakes? Uh, 
<laughs> I do like it. Uh, Deacon Mike, <laughs> I'm the Drew Smiley of the <laughs> <laughs> Hey, like and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget, guys, we're brought to you right now by the Tennessee Smokies, the um, the Cubs double uh, A affiliate. And um, they um, they just won the championship for the first time in 45 years. So they want you to go to their team store, smokiesbaseball.com backslash store to pick up some stuff. Uh, that does it for us. Chad, thank you. Uh, thank you. What a day. Um, caught me off guard. Uh, missed lunch. Got to get back to doing some other work. But, uh, man, that's a that's a hell of a day. You won't be able to wipe the smile off our faces today. Yep, yep. And um, again, uh, Jordan, just uh, send me your send me your uh, your email address. Just put your email address in here, and I'm going to email you. Uh, I, I'm going to get your real address. I'll email you, and I'll send you the duck. I, I'll get it in the mail probably this week. So, all right, guys, uh, make sure you stay tuned to our channel. We'll be covering this uh, as things go on. But a great day for the Cubs.